Day 130, electrostatics, example number 5. Given these three charges at the corners of this isosceles triangle, it's the plus 2 microcoulombs. Micro is 10 to the negative 6th. Micro equals 10 to the negative 6th coulombs in this case. And then we have the negative 3 microcoulomb charges at the base of this isosceles triangle. Figure out the net force on the plus 2 at the top. That's the easiest one of the three. So there are two forces being exerted on that top charge. And this will be a vector problem. There's a force of attraction towards the lower left. They pull on each other. I don't really care about the force on the negative 3, even though there is that force. I can draw it there. They're equal and opposite. And there'll be forces this way of attraction because those are opposites. One's a negative, one's a positive. But all four of those forces are equal. I can just call that F. These bottom two don't matter, but I'll just label them. All right, so F, according to Coulomb's law, F equals K Q sub 1 times Q sub 2 over R squared. So F equals 9 times 10 to the 9th times 2 microcoulombs. I'll put the micro there. That means 10 to the negative 6th when you put that in your calculator, times 3 microcoulombs. Once again, we don't need to worry about the negative there. That's taken care of with the arrows, showing that there's an attractive force between the two, or more importantly, a downward left force, or two forces on the, on the plus 2 microcoulombs at the top that are angled downward, as shown in the diagram. And the distance is 0 0.50 meters quantity squared. So the force, all four of those forces, come out to be 0.216 newtons. All right, but now it's a vector problem. We have to add those two vectors to the top of this triangle. So once again, like any vectors that are not lined up, we need to find components. But the nice part here is there's some symmetry because both forces are the same. I'll focus on the one that's down and to the left. That's 0.216 newtons. It has an F sub y and an F sub x. And those were easy to figure out if we knew the angles. Well, we have to go back to the, ge the geometry of the blue dashed triangle there to figure out the angles involved. If I draw that as a solid triangle, I know that this was 50 centimeters, 50 centimeters. What I'm going to do is drop a perpendicular, an altitude, to the bottom, which divides the bottom into two 30 centimeter pieces. If I take eight, either one of those triangles, take either one of those, I'll take this one, and I'm looking for theta up here, which will match the theta in the vector component diagram that I have for my f sub y and f sub x. Bottom line is the sine of theta equals 30 over 50. So theta comes out to be 37 degrees. All right, so now I know that that's 37 degrees up there. And I need to get f sub y and f sub x. Now, it turns out that we do not need to find f sub x. If you're thinking ahead a little bit here, f sub x will be canceled by the other f sub x of the other vector if I just draw a quick sketch. I'm a lot of space, but we're going to have the second force down and to the right on that top particle. It will have an f sub y that lines up with the other f sub y, but the second f sub x will cancel out the first f sub x. So we don't, don't need to really calculate those. That's the same 37 degree angle. So everything's the same. All we need to do is find f sub y and double it. So that comes out to be, if you look at that first triangle at the top here in black, the cosine of 37, cosine of 37 equals F sub y over the 0 0.216 newtons. So F sub y 
comes out to be 0 0.17 newtons. Rounded off to two sig figs. So therefore, the net force on that top charge is going to be double that because there will be two of those adding together. The F sub X's will cancel out. So the final answer, F net, that we're looking for on that top particle will be 0 0.34 newtons, let's say down or toward the base of the, tr of the uh, triangle. Down is good enough. If you have a diagram, that'll be sufficient for me to, to know that you're talk that, that I know that you know what you're talking about. This problem would be much more difficult if we had to find the net force on either one of the two base charges, the negative three, even though they'd have the same force on each other net force, the vector addition will be quite a bit more complicated because there'll be no cancellation of the any sideways charges there. But luckily we don't need to do that right now. There's the net force on the top charge. That's what we were asked to do, and we've done it.